All right. Let me see if the sound is okay. Hi, everybody. I am going to do a pretty focused episode right now. I just got to uh, uh, my wife's hometown, and I haven't slept yet. And I really wanted to do a live stream because I had a lot on my mind. So, this Roseanne thing, it's been bothering me to a ridiculous degree. Hang on, I can actually probably, my wife's uh, parents' uh, Wi-Fi is probably way better than mine, so I can actually turn up the bit rate. Let's juice this up. Let's make the picture look a little nicer, huh, guys? All right. So, let's talk about Roseanne's tweet. So this is why I really wanted to do this live stream because we we got off the plane and Walter loved the plane. I did an Instagram story today if you want to watch it. I've been I've been doing it since we left at two in the morning, and uh, he loves the plane. It was hilarious. So anyway, we get in the rental car, and I turn on Shapiro like I do almost every day. I love the dude. I love his show. I love his Birch Gold ads. I have hung out with him personally. I think he's a really good dude, really smart dude, real consistent dude, real logical dude, real ethical dude. I'm a big fan of Ben Shapiro. But his take on Roseanne was so frustrating to me that I was literally yelling at the radio, like, like my dad used to do to news. I was like, what are you talking about, Shapiro? And Amy's like, because she we, we've had a great vibe all day, and she's just like, I know, I know. Can you just not listen to it right now? I feel like it's making you really angry. And I never yell at the Shapiro podcast. Usually I find it very relaxing, oddly. I know politics usually don't relax people, especially at his word count. He talks really fast. I find it very relaxing because it's consistent and it's logical and there's universal values. And I'm starting to realize that's what really that I really need in my life. And I think a lot of you guys have this. I think it's why I don't like Islam. It is, I don't like when there's ideologies or, or that, that say that you treat one type of person differently than another type of person. Like Christianity, for example, doesn't have laws for Christians and then laws for non-Christians. A universal code of ethics or a universal system is what creates fairness. And fairness is how people can be different and argue and debate and then get along in the end. It's very important. If you have the rules of basketball, you can just play and you can lose and you can win and you can lose and you can win. And in the end, you don't want to murder the other person because there are rules. And that's why I can be tight with Christians, Jews, atheists, non-super practicing Muslims, Buddhists, people that just view the world as, uh, well, when I say atheists, I mean like the type that do this. A lot of atheists don't. I'm getting sidetracked. Got to stay focused. All right. So the monkey or the ape tweet. I see zero racism in it, by the way. None. And I'm not even going to defend Roseanne because she did the thing that I bothers me the most, which is defend or uh, uh, apologize. The fact she apologized means she may have truly just been doing uh, an opportunistic situation. And I'm like, I don't know. It makes me not want to defend her as much because I think it's almost worse when you know something's not wrong and you apologize just so you can try and keep your job and then you lose your job anyway. It never even works, so never do that. But I'm gonna talk about the, the ape tweet because when Shapiro was saying that it was egregious and racist and disgusting and how no conservatives would ever defend it and all this stuff, I was, I was literally yelling at my car. And this is, it's a class issue, I think. Maybe it's a class issue, I don't know. That was my theory. Because I, I can't understand how someone would think that. Let's let all right. So let's start going through my evidence. So she said that this woman that doesn't even look black, like my wife, who's half Norwegian, looks more ethnic than this lady. Uh, Roseanne Barr said that she's the like the the child of the Muslim Brotherhood and uh, Planet of the Apes, right? Okay. 
Uh, where's the picture? Where's the picture? Wait till you see this. Wait till you see this. Is this it? She she does look like that lady, and I think it's because of the haircut. And and the Planet of the Ape is a is a fictional lady played by a white person. And by the way, that doesn't even matter. That's not even my point. That's not even my point. But just look at this picture. That looks like that. All right. It's like well, uh, it's because she's a woman of color. Remember, here's a little. Remember, remember when everybody called George W. Bush. Curious George and compare him to a monkey. Here's just one of many memes where it's just all of George Bush's faces compared to a monkey. All right. So this is a question I want to ask people that believe the Roseanne tweet was racist. Is it racist? Who's it racist against to compare George W. Bush to a monkey? Is it still racist against black people or is that racist against white people? See, this is when things get weird so if you compare George W. Bush to a monkey, is that offensive to black people? Because it's a, if it's offensive to white people, then that means that the monkey comment isn't, it has nothing to do with being offensive to black people. It's just anytime you call someone a monkey, it, it offends their race. If that's the case, okay. See, that's the thing. I, I disagree with that, but at least that's consistent. But that isn't what these people think. So if you call George W. Bush a monkey, if you also think that that's disgusting and egregious because that's mocking the white race, then fine, have your opinion. But if you don't, if you think that that's less offensive to the white race than calling this lady who looks way more like what it was, and that's, that's a fictional character. Like uh, Bush was being compared to actual monkeys and apes. This is a lady being played, it's a character. And it's mostly about the haircut. Okay, so if you think that it's different, this is how crazy that is. That implies that black people look more like apes or monkeys than white people, which isn't even true. Like, most of the times I've called someone a monkey, it's either been my wife, who legitimately kind of looks like a monkey, or my son, who acts like a monkey, or Kenny Ken, who I played football with, who literally had arms that almost dragged on the ground. He was a redheaded, freckled guy. Um, you know, Ron Perlman looks exactly like a monkey. Ben Stiller looks like a spider monkey. I have I've been called a gorilla a million times. You don't think someone who's six foot seven and always forgets to tie his shoes is gonna be called a gorilla? So is that offensive? It's not offensive. It's not offensive. And and I have answers for some of your next arguments. Okay, so the next argument would be, well, historically, anytime someone says historically, you might as well just plug your ears. Historically, black people have been associated. Okay, uh, you want to know who was more associated with monkeys and apes? Back, back in the days when it was like, when it was like the cartoons and the papers and people weren't getting work, when, when, when your race literally meant you didn't get work, the Irish Okay, here's a depiction of a, uh, an Irishman in, uh, around the turn of the century as a monkey with a monkey wife. Okay, here's uh, depiction number two. Here's a drunk monkey Irishman sitting on a, um, a barrel of gin. Yeah, so, uh, okay. So, and, and they're not, these aren't funny pictures. This isn't a joke. That's, that's, they're, they made the Irish look like animals. And they were also slaves in America, and they were cheaper. And one of the reasons that a lot of people preferred getting black slaves is because they didn't uh, die as quickly because they weren't white. Imagine trying to pick cotton in Alabama being a Irish dude. Like, they just kept dying. And, and uh, during slave auctions, and I'm only talking about this because I'm trying to dispel that point. I'm trying to keep a consistent point. So if someone says, oh, because of it, historically... Historically, the blacks have been compared to monkeys. It, what? I, I really think it might be a working class thing. But I, so many people have called me monkey. I've called so many people gorilla or monkey. Like You have to think that way to think it's racist. Okay, here's another one. Uh, that's in Harper's Weekly. Okay, that's a black guy, but he looks more like one of those uh, caricature guys, like one of those uh, minstrel show guys sitting on a uh, scale. Uh, across from an Irish guy who, of course, is depicted as a monkey. And that's Harper's Weekly, 
Journal of Civilization in New York City. Okay, do you want to know who uh, said was the lowest race? Far below the blacks. Uh, they said, uh, this man said that the Irish were the lowest race you could be, and they were pretty much monkeys, and they were uh, unsavable. You want to know who said that? Some random right-wing extremist? No, that would be uh, Darwin. In the book Descent of Man, he literally says the Irish are a subspecies of monkey. And these, this is a group of people that was highly, highly uh, affected by, by racism. Highly. No Irish need apply. And we all have relatives. Well, a lot of us. So many. I'm related to Irish people. Uh, most of America is related to an Irish person. They were like the, they were the white Mexicans. They came in, they did a lot of banging, they, uh, a lot of drinking, uh, went to church, you know, went out on Saturday, probably got in a fight on Sunday, went to church, had another kid uh, by Monday. Right. And look at St. Patrick's day. They're depicted as midgets looking for gold and, and they're always trying to fight and they're tricking everybody. Imagine, imagine how crazy it would sound like what Ben Shapiro did about the monkey thing it would be as if someone said to me um Owen uh I think Matt's being real uh tricky and cheap and I said dude don't be anti-semitic and he's like what, what do you mean he owes me money he tricked me a little bit I'm like well historically we all know the Jews were the tricky ones that were always looking trying to get your money so you're being egregious right now. Imagine if that guy was just tricky and cheap. That's the same thing. This lady looks like that. So if you do that comparison and someone says that's racist, that means they think black people look like apes. Because some people look more or less like apes. That one is because more because of the haircut and that's not a real ape. Unlike the Bush memes, which are actual monkeys and apes, and no one called that racist. Okay, so let's continue. More recently, Bill Maher compared Donald Trump to uh, an orangutan. I don't find any of this offensive, by the way. I'm not doing a, um, a, a, well, then that's offensive stuff. And I'll get to that in a second, because that's a bad road to go down. Um... That's fine. Com like, tr compare Trump to an orangutan. Say anything you want. And by the way, historically speaking, Scottish people also, Donald Trump is ethnically Scottish. So Scottish people were, were under the thumb of the British who also depicted them as monkeys and kept them as slaves. Like, how do people not know history? When, when someone says, historically speaking, just, just assume they have no idea what they're talking about. They have no idea about the history of slavery or America or anything. And I'm not taking away from uh, the horrors of slavery and how it was chattel slavery and how it was uh, way disproportionately uh, the black population. And then the state pushed their state paw down on black people for, for a century after with Jim, Jim Crow and just all these um, uh, different big government Democrat programs. Sorry, I had to slip that in. I'm trying not to make this political, but... Uh, I find that to be very ironic. Okay, and this lady that's compared to the fictional character, is she this big saint? Look at, th like she tweeted, she's tweeted this. Cuba has an extraordinary resource, a system of education which values every boy and every girl. 2016, hashtag uh, Cuba visit at POTUS. For most of the 20th century, that's a treasonous offense to say that. Uh, Cuba was is a communist nation and threatened to blow up America in the Cuban Missile Price, Crisis. They wanted to nuke, like, dr nuke America, incinerate your kids, done. It was a highly oppressive regime where they executed children, they executed any political dissident, they, they just ravaged and raped and stole it was a nightmare. People were floating on rafts in shark-infested waters to try and get to America because it was such a horror show. And this lady is going to say that, and that's not offensive to people, but yet this is. This. She looks just like that lady. She looks just like that lady. And, I, and, and you know, I'm a little bummed that Shapiro did that. I'm not going to hold, hold it against him. I'm not a dude that... um 
that that holds grudges, especially when he may just not know this. He's like a he's a Jewish dude from New York. He went to Harvard. He was playing Paganini at like five. He, he I think he went to college and he was like two. You know, he's not one of those dudes that I think knows how a lot of people talk. And but it's a big big blind spot. For people to to think this way. By the way, Roseanne Barr may have been being shitty. The fact she apologized may, makes me... I'm not defending her right now. I'm not. I mean, I, I think that she shouldn't have lost her show. Obviously, that's crazy. And uh, But the fact she apologized, do not do that. It screws everyone else over. It may, it, it shows that that all they have to do is, is, is push you. And they'll and they'll break you, and it means that uh, maybe she was just going for shock value and not just trying to be funny. Because if you're truly being a comedian, you can say whatever you want. Like if you're trying to get a laugh, you're trying to do satire, you're trying to do whatever. Uh, okay, if she called her a uh, racial pejorative, fine, I get it, I get that. You know, it's Disney, and don't get me wrong, I kind of get it anyway. It's ABC, it's Disney. I think it's insane. It's it's hypocritical. I mean, uh, Jimmy Kimmel's on ABC and he compares Trump to a monkey all the time. And Jimmy Kimmel's been in blackface. Jimmy Kimmel satirized one of these guys. Like, see that that black dude in, in blackface where they used to do uh, little shows and eat big watermelon and stuff. That's actually very demeaning. That like for real. And that's coming from me. Like, I'm a I'm a dude who is not uh, one to um, jump on that. Like, jump on stuff. That's crazy. If you go on blackface and you do a minstrel show, that's real. That's 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 like there there could be a way to make that funny. Don't get me wrong. There could be a way. I just haven't thought of it. But that is um, way over the top, unless you have a great joke. Because like, um, you know, th- there's a there's a comedic way to make anything funny. Like I could dress as a Nazi and make it funny, but you can't make it about the horror. You have to make it about something silly. Like if I was uh, just a sketch as I'm dressed as a Nazi and I'm with a Nazi and I'm the Nazi that just got into CrossFit and won't stop talking about it. You see how that's the funny is the horror. And then, um, and then it's about just a dumb thing. I'm just being an annoying Nazi or I could just be a, a Nazi with a lisp. Seriously, Jews need to die. And that's the whole joke. Or it's just like, does anybody else like quiche? And I'm just dressed like a Nazi. Like, that's why you can't say what you can and can't do because you don't know the comedian's intention, you know? Um, Like, I was going to do a sketch where I was dressed like KKK looking, but I was was a ghost with a pointy hat. And and all the other ghosts were like, dude, what's up with you, man? I'm like, dude, I I died wearing a pointy hat. Like, I had a dunce cap on in, in a classroom and I... I died, and now I'm a ghost with a pointy hat. It's like, yeah, but you know what you look like, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do, I do. Well, guess what? This is this is it for me now. I'm a ghost with a pointy hat. Like, there is no setup that 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 is 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 off limits because you don't know the intention, you don't know the irony. And I've been spiraling a little this week. I don't know if you guys have seen me on Instagram. I've been posting a lot. The last live stream I did, I, I got way too angry at trolls, and I, I'm really going to work on that because I got some great messages from some bears just being like, Big Bear, just keep it together, man. Like, the trolls feed on that negativity, and you're, like, really important to people's lives. Like, And I, I was I was touched, to be honest. So I will work on that. But, dude, Tommy Robinson and, and Roseanne the same week for very different things. Tommy from the government, which is a real free speech issue, I'm a private property guy. If ABC wants to fire Roseanne, you can do whatever you want. That's your property. If the NFL wants you to stand to sing the anthem, you go for it. But the hypocrisy has cultural issues, right? So Roseanne has mocked the national anthem. She like made a mockery of it. Roseanne is crazy. She she when she was younger, she got in a car accident and got like minor brain damage so that she has no impulse control. That's a fact. Any everybody who knows her knows that. Like that. She's a low impulse control person, and that's part of her, her comedic um, charm. And so when you hire Roseanne, you know she's wacky. She's a wacky lady and, uh, you know, gets all into conspiracies and gets pissed and then makes it funny and then 
turns on that. And that's that's her. So if you hire her to be her and she just says a benign thing, and man, I it it bothered me so much to hear people I respect that much be like, it's egregious racism. It's nothing. It's 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 historically nothing. It's now nothing. It was a it's nothing. That lady is a communist. She's awful. She doesn't even look black. And it was a fictional character played by a white lady. And black people have no monopoly on monkey comparisons. Charles Darwin and, and his buddies <laughs> it, like were instituting policy to keep Irish from breeding because they were a monkey subspecies. So like... I have no tolerance to hear any of this stuff. Like none. Just just zip. So like when when he does stuff like that, I really felt the uh need to come on here and be like, "Okay, all you people out there that are feeling this way, like you're not alone. Um I here's a story from my childhood. And in South in South Park did a did an episode similar to this uh moral of the story. Theirs was about the uh the flag of South Park and it was uh, between the kids and chef because there was um, an image of a of a black guy getting hung by a bunch of white stick figures. It was stick figures, and there was a black guy getting hung, and all these other stick figures. And Chef wanted to ban the flag, and the kids wanted to keep the flag. And so Chef got really mad at the kids. And then in the end, the kids uh, had a rainbow flag. They had all the stick figures rainbow, like all different colors. And they were like, you know, uh, or what was it? How did they do it? It might not have been rainbow, but it was something about like uh, accepting the past uh, and now they're holding hands. Or oh, oh, long story short, the moral of the story was they didn't even think it was racist because they didn't recognize that it was white and black. They just saw people hanging a person because kids aren't born with these prejudices. They're not. You're, you're born, you have tribal instincts. Don't get me wrong, but you're not given your tribe yet. Like you don't know your tribe. So like um, if you were in a society that was based completely on categorizing people by height, which I would prefer, and I think is way more accurate. Like the six sevens hang with the six sevens. Five niners do not associate with the six ones. Okay, if you're raised that way, you can teach people to get tribal as hell based on height. And I'm not saying there isn't racial differences, stuff like that. I know some people might be spiraling right now. Like, oh, you're denying that there's fucking racial. All I'm saying is when I was a kid, I remember in third grade, uh, one of my buddies told me a joke. He said, uh, did you hear how Patrick Ewing died? And I said, how? And he said he stuck his head out of a moving car window and his lips beat him to death. And I laughed because back then, it was a real low bar for jokes. Like that joke isn't really well written at all. Uh, you know, thinking back to some of the childhood jokes, it, they were written so poorly. But anyway, my teacher said, that's racist. Do not laugh at that, Owen. You're a bad, bad boy. And I was like, how is that racist to have big lips? And we had this moment. And she realized that I did not associate big lips with black people yet. Like in my mind, Kenny Kent, the guy I talked about earlier with the dragging knuckles, and he was unbelievable football, great guy. You know, he led with his head a lot. He, but he had the biggest lips of anyone I knew. And I knew black dudes. I just didn't even associate that. And so... My teacher was such an idiot that I don't think she really internalized what had just happened. She had just passed a, a, a racial stereotype to a third grader unintentionally because she was being a know-it-all bitch. Which brings me to my last three points. Uh, let me check and make sure the stream's still going and uh, I'll read the super chats and whatnot. Oh, someone just wrote racism doesn't exist. Well, racism is a tool of Marxism. It's just a fact. It's not a factor in society. It's just not. You know, people are like, well, you don't know. It's like, I do. I do. And by the way, people that think that there's all these white people attacking black people, you know that a, um, a black individual is five times more likely to attack a white person than a white person is to attack a black person. And that's given that black people are only 12% of the population. 
if you uh, uh, do the math, that's uh, they're 30 times more likely for a black person to attack a white person and a white person to attack a black person. <laughs> so uh, there's that. And uh, it's the same with rape. It's like there's such a way higher percentage of black people raping white women than white people raping black women. And of course, that doesn't mean that a black dude is going to assault you or rape your chick. That's why you don't think in demographics. You think in individuals. And I'm starting to think there is a lot. Listen, I, I think there's societal factors. I do. I think that, that there's a lot of black people have a rough life in America. They do. They do. They really do. But it's not the reasons that they're telling you. It's horrifying education. It's not having a dad because they incentivized single motherhood in the 60s. And then they reinforced it with over-the-top drug laws in, um, in inner cities with, with, with moms that were getting paid to not be married. You know, um, Larry El or, uh, Elder was talking about how he remembers when, the, when government employees would be going door-to-door -door and seeing if there, was, if there wasn't a man around, they'd give you money. And black people used to have a, a tight nuclear family, and then it dissolved. And when you have a, a child raised without a father... By the way, you can end up fine without a father. You can. It's, it, this is all just probability stuff. But it, it increases your likelihood of being abused, of being neglected, of not learning skills. Um, and that's what I think the factor is. I think it's very much, much less uh, genetic than I think uh, people want to admit. Because I, I see the left as being very racist. <laughs> Like the social justice left. I'm not going to, I'm trying not to lump the left anymore. I told myself I'm not just going to spiral about the left anymore. It's so dumb and fucking boring. But like, it, it's, it's people that are, that, that baby black people like that, where they're like, don't say anything. And if you call anyone an ape, that's racist against black people. It's like, what? That's so over the top. That That's white supremacy, which is the different policy decision than, than the other white supremacists. Like, some white supremacists, which are, there's almost none of, uh, want are, are like, whites are awesome, so let's give them more stuff in their own world. There's very few of those guys, by the way. And then the social justice regressive left is like, whites are so awesome, let's limit everything about them so we can give this subspecies a chance. It's the same assumption of, of white people being better. It's just different policy. That's why they drive me so crazy. Because when you truly don't see the world in demographics, and I don't, I'm not saying I'm, I'm colorblind. No, of course I know, um, you know, someone's black or white or, or uh, tall or short or how thick their hammer is. You know, you can see the outline in their sweatpants. But like, you see people as individuals, all this stuff is noise and it's dumb and it's driving our country insane. It's so crazy. Like, have you ever talked to like someone from China or like Poland about like how we are? They're like, you guys are just nuts. Systemic racism. Oh my God, I had to clutch my pearls. I was, it's like, okay, well, the, the odds are white people are more in danger, which we're not even really in danger statistically. Like the odds that a black dude mugs you and hurts you or kills you is basically zero. It's zero. And, uh, but, and vice versa is even lower. So this is all just a way to divide. Why, why do people, why, why is this happening? It's so obvious because universal principles. Okay. If Chris Rock can say cops need to shoot more white kids and Roseanne can't say that this lady looks like this character that's not fair. And so what that does is it makes it so there's no universal ethics. There's no fairness. There's no rules. It's like what Facebook does. I'm banned on Facebook right now. I'll get it back, but they don't say why. They say, you did something wrong. We won't tell you. We won't tell you how long, and we won't tell you the next time, or we won't even tell you the post. So they do that to separate people so that no one's American or no one has conversations and no one talks about our school system, how horrifying it is. Like you can, you can take these kids, a lot of these inner city kids, if you give them skill sets to learn how to solve problems, 
give them logic, give them the Socratic method, it would change their life completely. It, it, they, they have such a low chance of getting out of that. So, But it's just not why the media says. It's not because white people exist. Because a white guy is looking for pants at Banana Republic is not why um, Darius can't get out of Baltimore. No, Darius can't get out of Baltimore because his mom has six kids and his dad's in jail. So his mom was so overwhelmed that she would just beat all of them so that they would kind of act okay. And uh, so he has trauma from that. He, he was left alone by, by his mom and, and, you know, gangs got to him. Tries to fit in, didn't have a uh, father figure, goes to school. School is basically just a zoo. You know, they're not there to teach anything and they don't punish you if you bring a gun or a knife because they want tax money. So they don't want to expel you because they want your money. And this is all set up to create dudes with no skills in life. They graduate with no ability of doing basic math, reading. And see, that's when people have to know these things and not make the jump that that's a black thing. That's a big government fucks your life up thing. And it, it, um, and so when you meet that guy and he's like, yo, dog, I ask you, yo, I'll punch your face. I fucking, you, you, you fucking look at me, bitch. You know, these guys, cause they don't know how to solve problems. That's what it is. And they could have, I mean, they might be fucked now. I'm not one of these bleeding hearts. It's like, if we take 30-year-old Darius and sit him down and teach him about Socrates, he'll be fine. No, we got to get the family back, man. It's like that kid could have been fine. It's just when you don't show kids how to solve problems or, or you say that if anyone disrespects you, you have to punch them immediately. You have to just, you just, just go at them or else everyone will think you're a bitch. It's like, or you could just not be around that guy anymore and just work hard, save your money. And they, like, kids are so, they look to you for, like, advice. And that's why dudes with no dads can either become Steve Jobs or um, a not lost guy that doesn't know how to handle conflict or how to, like, what does a man do in that situation? Um, and that's what I think about that because I hate talking about race. Everywhere you look, it's race now. You can't go into Starbucks without thinking about race. And it's new. This is all new. Most of my life, it was not like this. Most of my life, you never thought about the NFL all kneeling for a flag, complaining about something they can't really articulate properly. You know, you got Colin Kaepernick, a Hawaiian with white parents who sucks at football, who looks Puerto Rican, has this huge problem with America uh, the country that would give him by far the most freedom he can possibly imagine and wealth beyond his wildest dreams. And he will wear socks depicting police as pigs. I mean, he, he wore a Castro shirt in Cuba and wonders why uh, Miami wasn't into him. I don't know. Maybe because you triggered a bunch of uh, refugees from the 80s whose grandma got raped and killed by Castro and Che. You know, maybe you're a self-absorbed piece of shit. How's that sound? That, and, and making it all against white people, like it's all the whites' fault. It's all the whites' fault. The white people, white people. And that's the problem. This is the problem I have with the Roseanne thing. It's not that she got fired. You know, I know that there can be sensitive times, but it's not that I, I want people to think that whites have it just as hard. It's not like that at all. In, every individual has a different life. Every individual, every individual, some whites have it easy, some whites have it shit. Some blacks have it easy, some blacks have it shit. Some blacks look like they have it easy, but really at home they're struggling with depression. Some whites look like they're on top of the world, but really at home they just, they, they, they can't stop cutting themselves and doing heroin. You know what I mean? Like everyone's an individual. And that's why this is a way to divide a nation so that no one can talk and communicate. And this is what happens. So check this out. This is my final point. All right. These are two LA Times, this is my final point, I have two more points. This is an LA Times article, a um, little time in between them. So on the left it says, knowingly exposing others to HIV will no longer be a felony in California from the Los Angeles Times. That is uh, October 6, 2017 at 4.18 p.m. written by Patrick, some, some gay name. Uh, so on the right, you have May 7, 2018 STDs in LA County are skyrocketing. Officials think racism and stigma 
maybe to blame. Or maybe the fact that you uh, decriminalized intentionally giving people AIDS might be the problem. No, stigma. Stigma. Yeah, that's, that's really what's happening. There's so little stigma. There's so little stigma that it, it, it's a non-factor. It's just a nothing factor. You know, like th this one um, black executive that was uh, at the network that I was at, this woman, this black woman, cool lady, but I, I was posting uh, I was posting some stuff on Facebook, turn up the heat a little bit, talking about Roseanne, and she wrote me this thing about how, you know, I don't know what it's like to be black, all that. And you have to understand, when people say you don't know what it's like to be black, you have to say you don't know what it's like not to know what it's like to be black. Like, how long do you do that? How long do you play that game like you don't know what it's like? That All that is, all that is, is a leftist trick to make it so no one can talk. If you say you have, you, you, uh, you have no idea and you cannot speak on being black because you aren't black and I am not either, but I'm a woman, which is something. Okay, real quick. This is the writer's room of Arrow. That show Arrow. It's all women. You think they've ever even shot an Arrow? It's just a bunch of privileged, liberal, white. And by the way, I'm not saying privileged with a white thing. Privilege is in privilege. These girls probably went to Yale because their dad went there. You know, what do they have to write about? Are they are they woman explaining a man's life? Like Arrow is like a like a superhero dark figure who shoots arrows. Do you think any of these bitches have shot an arrow? No. <clears throat> anyway, so that's how they keep people divided. So this is my final point. So this woman says to me, like, you don't know what it's like. I had to talk to my boys about like police brutality and how they could be, you know, attacked or something. And she was like, one time I, I, I fit a profile and someone, you know, cops pulled guns on me and, and you don't know what that, that's like. It's like, dude, Obviously, I've had guns pulled on me by cops. I'm the big bear. Like, I've had helicopter lights on me. Of course, I've had guns pulled on me. I, I wasn't talking this insane. Not that it's insane, but I wasn't like, obviously, we've all been shot by cops. No, but I told her, I go, I go, listen, I've only known one person to ever be gunned down by the police unarmed. One. And I know a lot of people. I know a lot of black people. I know a lot of Hispanic people. I know a lot of white people. All social classes, all demographics all over this country. I know one person who was gunned down by a cop. And it was the craziest, most unfair, uh, brutal thing to happen. And I go, I bet you don't even know his name because he's white. And she was cool. She was like, I'm sorry to hear that about your, your friend. That's, that, that's what's bothering me so much is this lady is a cool lady. Why are we talking about race in America in 2018 when we could be talking about the history of a coat of arms? Like that could be really interesting. Like why are the things on the coat of arms? Like we could talk about that, but instead every single conversation devolves into black. Okay, this is the story of John Winkler. John, I knew John Winkler because he's from Seattle and my wife uh, knew him. And um, we had a mutual friend, uh, this dude John, and, and uh, Winkler was working for Tosh as a, a PA. He was a young kid, nice kid, trying to be a comedian, working hard. Okay, so here's the first one. L.A. Sheriff's deputies mistakenly gunned down John Winkler, but the story begins in Seattle. That's him, right? So he's at a party, and a guy starts wielding around a knife. And he doesn't know the guy. And people call the cops, and everyone's super scared. And so Winkler runs out of the uh, party and um, he gets shot by a bunch of cops to, de to death. And then they tried to um, do a report that that isn't what happened, that he was really trying to attack them. And all the evidence was so obviously not that, that here's the next article. Uh, Five million dollar settlement for family of hostage deputies killed by mistake. Okay, look at the wording of that. And this is in LA Times. And you've never heard John Winkler's name. You know Michael Brown, who punched a cop. This is a dude trying to get away from uh, trying to get away from someone with a knife, and he gets gunned down by cops. Look, look at the kid. It, look, like that, that's the kid. Okay, he was a nice kid. And look at how they worded this. Deputies killed by mistake. Can you imagine if he was black? 
They'd be like executed black teen, right? So I'm like, you, and, and by the way, I talked about this on a, a stream a while ago and someone who worked on that case contacted me and wrote me an email and I won't get into details because it was a lot of like real inside baseball. The court case of that was insane. It would have made Eric Garner look like Al Pacino. It was such corruption, like such, it wasn't like they were trying to kill this kid. It's the same reason that, that some black kids get shot. Because a lot of these police are not properly trained at all. They, they're scared. They have too many guns. They, they're, it, it's just like all, the, all the, um, the bureaucracy is in place so that they hide what they did. They don't get justice. All this stuff. You know? And most cops are fine, obviously. Individuals. But like that's the cause. It's not that people are out trying to gun down black kids. One of the cops that shot him was black. The other one was Hispanic. Look at this kid. And I'm telling you right now, I, I really like this kid. He says, what is it? He looks like he, looks like he uh, was it like one of the bad guys in Karate Kid. That's a mom who loves him. That's a mom who birthed him, who raised him. And he got gunned down by cops because he was running away from a crime. And you don't know his name. Why? Because there really is an agenda. Blacks are victims. And dudes like me and a lot of you guys are not feeling it. We're like, this is dumb. I can call my buddy a monkey. You don't get to tell me that that's racist. Like, that's crazy. He, what if he just likes swinging on a bar? It, what if I call him a possum? What if someone calls me a giraffe? Huh? Is that linked to systemic racism? Is it systemic racism? And everybody, like, oh, so all these people, because it's, it's, it's addicting. It's addicting for some of these people to be a victim, right? Because... Man, a lot of black dudes used to be the coolest dudes to be around because they were the last people to be victims. You know, like when you're a, a white kid from a small town and you first hang out with a bunch of black dudes and you're just like in awe or you see like um, LL Cool J. You know, that dude wasn't complaining about problematic systemic racism to an HR department. He was crushing ass. And just, his name was Ladies Love Cool J, just counting money, chiseled. Mama said, knock you out. Huh? I'm going to knock you out. There was no victim shit. Black dudes were just like, uh, man, it feels good to be a gangster. It was like, it, it just was different. And then now it's like a lot of them are falling victim to that, 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 that dopamine drip. Of the whole, like, well, you don't know because you're not me. It, it's, a, it's a get out of jail free card. It's like a, a Curb Your Enthusiasm episode where, like, Larry had a death in the family. So he just keeps bringing it up so that everyone just lets him say and do anything. When you incentivize someone to be a victim, they're going to look for it and they're going to find it. They're going to be like, well, you don't know what it's like. You know, like, sometimes when I'm walking late at night, I'll see girls ahead of me. And they see that I'm black and they'll cross the street. You don't know what that that's like. I'm like... Dude, you don't think they cross the street for me? I'm 6'7 and look psychotic. And I also dress like a fucking homeless person. Do you think girls alone at night don't cross the street with me? <laughs> and they should. If they know it's good for them. So, this lady who's uh, a proponent of socialism was compared to uh, this fictional character that her hair looks exactly like. No one cares that Bush did it, had it done to. No one cares that Marr did it to Trump. Oh, actually, people did care about that. And I'm going to speak on that real fast. So I saw this. There's a push to get Bill Maher fired following Roseanne's cancellation because of that, that thing. And it was three years later. And no one really cared. That's, that's not the right answer, guys. It's all about universal uh, treatment. And I, fall, I fell victim to that once. <clears throat> I, there was this guy on MSNBC, Sam something, and he got fired for something stupid. And I, I argued with my boy Dave Smith about it for hours. Because I was like, he should be fired. If those are the rules you set up, you should pay uh, the piper for your own, your own monstrous rules. You know, that's why even though Aziz Ansari's story is creepy and somewhat Asperger-y and definitely not uh, romantic at all. Uh, definitely a little, little grabby and clawish and uh, predatory. It's not rape. It's not sexual assault, you know. 
Like, uh, but I was like into him being shamed because that's what he was doing to men. He was uh, saying, if you're not a male feminist, what's wrong with you? Like, men are the worst, right, ladies? Right? Like, look at how, how gross and dumb we are. Not me, though. I'm wicked sensitive. Let's hang out. I'm going to claw your face. So when I saw that he could get a taste of his own medicine, I loved it. Same with that Sam guy. And then Dave convinced me the other way. And that's why it's good to have friends you can talk to it and try to find the right answer, not how to win. You know? And, uh, and it's like when you have an ethic or a, a thing where it's like, that's wrong to do that. Like, it, it, if that, that's not good to do that because this is what can happen you can get a state an authoritarian state that wants more power so what do they do they get the uh, right wing left wing um and, and if and if we aren't if if we aren't uh grounded in what we believe and know to be true this is what can happen and it happens all the time i think it's probably one of the reasons that uh they like islam and postmodernism and all this divide and conquer bullshit no, no universal ethics, like no family, no none of that. The reason they like this is because they can say, oh, well, Roseanne got fired. How mad are you guys? You had a uh, Trump supporter and, and now it's unfair, right? Imagine Saul Alinsky doing that. And you're like, yeah, it's like, well, well, Bill Maher did it. So why don't you get him fired? And they're like, yeah, blood for blood. And then he gets fired. All that is, is you guys are now fighting to give up your rights. And then what? Then they get another one of your, your your rights taken away? Well, then why does he have a gun? Well, then why does he get a gun? Before you know it, you're done. You have to live what you live. Like, And I've made this mistake. I'm not saying this in a, in a preachy way. Like, that, that's, that was a hard one for me to do. Same with um, pedophiles talking. Pedophiles talking drives me insane. Like, if a guy says... I'm attracted to minor persons and I, I've never touched them and I never will, but it's it's not wrong to, to be attracted to a nine-year-old. My blood boils. And that was one of the, the hardest things I've had to face in my life. But the fact that I think I made the right decision on that, where it's like, you can't just, if I stop him from speaking, then what's next? You know? And it's so hard. That's the hardest part. Freedom is like, there's such a, there's such a cost. It's worth it. But the cost is you have to look into someone that you loathe, that you would, you, your heart wouldn't race if you gutted them. Like you're like, literally you could gut them and your pulse would stay at like 60. You know, you'd just be like, nice. Like, I'm so glad that dude's dead. Like, that's how I feel about pedophiles. I can't stand, I can't stand that because it's, it's about, it's not even like some weird sexual wiring it's about the destruction of trust and innocence it's true evil it's as evil as you can possibly get like the the the, the beauty and trust of a child looking at an adult like what's the world i'm so glad to be here you know like i like i'm i'm like if, if there's a kid that trusts you like my son trusts me completely i could be like walter put the lamp on your head he'd be like and, and, and picturing someone manipulating that and then doing it in a way that's the worst possible thing you can do, I want them all dead. But like, if you just say words, I got to let you because I'm a free speech absolutist. And that, that hurt, man. That hurt bad. That one stung bad. Cause, uh, but that's the price. That's the piper. So like you get, you get gutted for your jokes um, you can't, don't do it to other people. Cause it, cause you never know how, how life works. If you're a, a believer, you never know how God works. If you're not a believer, you never know how the universe works. But like perfect example is, um, Hungary, Poland, Czech Republic. These countries are doing great in Europe right now. There's good news out there. There's a lot of good news. They're, 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 uh, the, the prosperity of the world keeps going up. It, it's incredible time to be alive. And, and as much as I can like, uh, bitch about things and come at stuff and be intense. That's because of how much I love our culture and I want uh, my children to have a good world. It's out of love. It's not out of a lack of gratitude. It's out of an intense gratitude of like, I want 
future generations to get the world I got where you watch a movie and it's the hero's journey. You know, it's fighting evil. It's not this postmodern soup of nonsense, you know, 13 reasons why and all this bullshit about glorifying suicide and stuff. Like I, I want people to not think that empowerment for a woman is sitting in a cubicle until your ovaries dry up after three abortions. Like that's sadness. That's that I can't imagine being that. You can choose to do whatever you want, but like I, these are this is why I, I I get intense. Like what the left does, it's not about government policy. And I did that "Why I Hate the Left" video, and I hope you guys watch it on YouTube. It's one pretty big. It's got a few hundred thousand uh, views because that was my main point, and that's the point I keep trying to make. It's not about what your view is. If you think that calling George Bush a monkey is racist to white people because it, it degrades that race then I would be fine with your opinion that Roseanne calling that commie bitch uh, an ape is racist because that's consistent with your views. But if you think rules for thee and not for me, that's how civilizations crumble. I have friends that they've been in a special ops type branches of the military where their whole thing is toppling economies. Like, I know people that go into countries, and they've done it, I know a guy that did it in the 70s, I know a guy that did it in the 90s, where they'll go into a, a country, set up a plan, and figure out how to topple it. And this is how you do it. This is what you do to topple a, a society, an economy. You, you, you make it so there's no fair rules. And that way, people are in a constant state of agitation, and they can't, if you don't know what's coming or why things happened, you're just like... You're like a stunned cow, just ready to be slaughtered. I'm not, and I'm not, a lot of you guys aren't, and that's because we've done the work to think like, what do I believe? And that way, and this is another thing why the uh, uh, Roseanne being canceled was so important for the left. Do you think they give a flying fuck about this comment? It's a haircut comment. And, and you can interpret intention either way. You can interpret, Roseanne might have been being a real bitch about it, and trying to like dig some sort of weird shock thing and didn't really, or she was just being funny on Ambien and just being like, ah, oh, she looks like that lady from like with the hair. And like, I know she is in bed with Iran, which she, I think she, she was probably, I can't prove that, but which is nothing. Okay. I have no idea what I'm talking about right now. I just had a wicked point. Damn. What was my point? I'm going to go in the chat real quick. Guys, what the hell was I just talking about? Uh, my daughter said you were all farts. Oh, that's hilarious. Roseanne, but I sure hear a lot. All right, what, what was I saying? Uh, special, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How did it topple, topple? All right, I got it. So what you do is you make it so there's no rules. So you make it so that, like, no one knows why certain groups get to do one thing. Like, why Bill Maher could say, like, nigger and then apologize and keep a show. To Ice Cube, who was in a group called Niggers with Attitudes. Like, that made no sense to anybody. It's what if you really hate the word and he says it, ax him. But he was also being self-deprecating, and it's just a word. That's how I view it. That's how I've always viewed it. Where it's like you, you gotta let an artist have all the colors to paint. And and I I I I like to give a wide berth with art, where it's like if someone on the street called it a black dude that like the black dude has a right to fuck that dude up potentially. I don't know about English common law. If you have a right to punch, but it's very, that would be offensive. But if you're saying I'm a house nigga, that's what he said. Bill Maher is basically saying I'm a cuck. I'm a bitch. And it was just, it was an ironic thing. He was trying to sound rappy. He, it was so nothing. And so then he, he had to apologize to a gangster rapper who's rapped about gang banging bitches. Like, you know, like running a train on a hoe. Like someone with the, I mean, I try not to be judgmental, but but people who have rapped about trafficking drugs and gangbanging a woman. There's no woman that's mentally stable at all or doesn't have some sort of weird trauma that she's dealing with that would ever want to be gang banged. That isn't a fantasy for women unless they're like going through some real fucked up self-hatred shit. So like, that's fine. And so then he has to apologize and then he gets to keep his job. Because Michael Dyson, that piece of shit that just was arguing with Jordan Peterson was like, 
you okay, you okay, uh, Mar. So if you're like that, how do you run an economy? How do you like hire people? You know, that's how you get, that's how you lose the show Arrow, right? Boom. It's all written by young, dumb white girls. For No, that show's now done. All right. That's how you don't know why AIDS is spreading. Like that, that thing I talked about earlier. That's why no one hears about uh, Winkler. No, you just hear about the nonsense ones. You get to that point, you can't function. Like, fortunately, America's very resilient. America isn't England. America beat England. America's very, uh, takes a lot of pride in its freedom, its personal liberties. Our history is wrapped up in it. It's not like what, this culture doesn't fall from this stuff. It just gets very um, stunned. It, it gets uh, counterproductive. But we're still going to have a uh, market economy. We're still going to have, I mean, it's not great, but we still have our freedoms. We still have our liberties. They're not going to go away. The, the fundamental ones won't. What happened with Roseanne was not a uh, breach of constitution. It was not a Tommy Robinson situation. So here's the good news, guys. And then I'll get out of here. But the good news is, uh, if you can see through this shit and you have your moral code and you know right and wrong and you stick with your shit, the world's your oyster. Like you can just, just do what you do. And, and America is a great place to do that still. And if you do that and other people see that that works, this is the problem with the Roseanne thing. When she apologized and still got canned, these are all shows to the rest of the world. Like this is what happens. And then you see celebrities that I personally know to be complete scumbags are like, how dare you? Like they're just following along. And I call them zebra people. And this is why it was important for Trump that Roseanne was on. And this is why the left hated it so much. And I'll tell you right now, there's a category of people that I've come up with called zebra people. And zebra people, because of the stripes of the zebra, they have to stay in a group or they, they, they think they'll die. So a lot of people have been drifting to the left simply because they turn on the Oscars, the Emmys, ESPN, uh, Netflix, Hulu, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, they turn on any of that and it appears falsely, falsely, it's called astroturfing, it's false grassroots, it appears that everybody's real into nonsense. It appears that everyone thinks all white people are, that, that white people are the only ones who can be racist and no one else can be racist. Like that's, that's a racist statement. That's a definition of irony. If I wrote that as a joke, I think it was too crazy. Like only white people, that's like saying, um, um, the other day I thought about whether or not I was self-absorbed for, for a whole day. That's all I did. Like someone has to be crazy to not have the self-awareness to, to hear themselves say only white people can be racist. That's, that's, it's all generalizations are false. These are basic, these are basic, um, oxymorons, you know, that's, that's just basic irony. So it's like saying consensual rape. It's just an opposite thing. So anyway, so these people, they don't believe it, but they think everyone else thinks it. So they just start drifting that way. And there's a lot of zebra people. And then there's people that aren't zebra people. A lot of the bears are not zebra people. A lot of the bears could see people get slandered and go, oh, they're wrong. You know, I've done that a million times with a million people. Dude, I've seen Stefan Molyneux has been slammed so hard. And so unjustly. Same with Tommy Robinson. It's like, they'll say like, oh, far right, radical, white nationalist. It's like, name one thing they've said. Just like, what like what makes you think that? It's like, oh, well, you know what they say. It's like, no, what? Stefan's whole thing is not beating your kids and then the non-aggression principle. And he is spreading the word about horrifying institutional things that disproportionately affect black poor people very very negatively like the the that's the thing and even with the racial IQ differences no one knows why no like you don't know why my theory honestly i think a lot of um people are not given the tools to be smart. I, don't get me wrong. There's, there's, there's literature that says that there's a lot of genetic component to it, but I, there's a reason that the, like the North Africans have an average IQ like 65 and, and America it's like 90. And then you go to like some parts of Europe 
and like France is way lower than like fucking. I I just I'm not buying that. That's all just genetic shit. I think that there's there's like if you abuse your kid, they're not going to be as good at figuring out fucking puzzles. You know, if you're a if you don't, um, I think like word count, like how many words you say, because this is this is the thing that I I, I why I'm skeptical of the racial IQ thing. I, I know it exists, but the cause. I'm skeptical because of um, the f- people claim that that like all oh, the Head Start programs and all that failed, and there's uh, certain groups of people that just can't be risen to any level of intelligence. We're still talking about public government fucking schools, guys. Like the Head Start program. Like what the fuck? I'm talking about old school back in the day, um, fucking um, homeschooling. Like, you're telling me that, like, if you spent a lot of time, if you got the amount of words that I got to hear, my IQ is off the charts. And you know what? I have a I have a real weird feeling that it isn't that genetic, that I got lucky as fuck to have the parents I had. My parents talked to me all the time. My mom read to me every night. My dad taught me Bach when I was, like, three. Like, I had a family so enriching. That like I was given the tools to get more tools and to get more tools. That's why I've been so obsessed with education lately. Because it's like, I think the truth is somewhere in the zone of like taboo and but not really as scary as you think it is. Because this is the the problem with the uh, racial IQ thing. Why not talking about it is so bad. If you don't address that that's real, that there is genetic, dif- not genetic, there is racial differences in average IQ. That's a fact. And by the way, whites aren't at the top. So I don't know why a Nazi would give themselves the bronze and give the fucking Jews the number one. It just doesn't add up. The, the story's not there. But if you don't acknowledge that fact, it's real easy to start conspiring and to start thinking that there's a... Uh, you know that the Irish are these fucking monkeys. Look at these guys. They used to say that the Irish had brains that could never develop. Okay, but so imagine if you gave them like a non-traumatic childhood, like a dad that was something like, "What I got, it doesn't get better." I we, we weren't rich, you know. I got the shit beat out of me sometimes. Uh, I was I was fucked with in uh, public school. Um, I've been shot in the eye with a BB gun by a neighborhood kid and no one really gave a shit. Uh, I've had my nose broken. I've had ribs broken. You know, it's not like I had this like plush, uh, white girl life. We had, I never had new clothes till I, 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 uh, went to college, which I didn't get debt because my parents had, uh, the hookup and I got a, a scholarship. I got two scholarships. So but I am so fucking privileged with education. And that's why I really want to set up a way to do it with my family and then try and crack some of these codes. Because there was this dude, that Stand and Deliver movie, about that real guy that took all these like migrants' kids in California and taught them calculus with this method. And they would just start, they, they beat all the other schools like every year. They were they just fucking crushed. Like, like, okay, I'm not knocking George W. Bush. I'm not knocking him. I'm not, I'm not one of these guys that's like, oh, he's the devil. I don't think he's got a super high IQ, but I think he was given tools, leadership tools, uh, system analysis tools, just tools to operate life at the highest level. You know, Connecticut, Texas, Maine, you know, dad and CIA ex-president. Like, he had the tools, to, to be a guy that I don't think his hardware is too, like super fast. And I'm not knocking, I'm, I'm not saying that is like a shitty thing. But I think that he got the, the tools to be a world leader. And I think that education is really important. I, I'm, I'm spiraling. I'm going to read the, the super chats and I get out of here. I just, I'm really passionate about that these days. And the thing about the genetic IQ thing, why I keep bringing it up, because I want to know. I want to know how you teach people the best. And why? I don't know. Maybe because I have a two-year-old that's currently learning language. (laughs) And he's part fucking Mexican. So I don't know if I got some shit genes in there. You know what I mean? Just joking, obviously. But um, I want to know what the real answer is because people aren't being honest. Public school is not to teach you anything. 
Like, public school for these inner city kids is fucked. Like, it's a zoo. It's a zoo for animals. All right, I'm going to read the Super Chats, and I got to go. <clears throat> All right. Owen, I think canceling Roseanne is going to come back and bite the leftists in the butt. It was a top-rated show. The folks who watch it are not going to buy the reason it was canceled. Uh, well, that, yeah, well, that's good. I just think it's all about making our own shit. It, it's like not knocking on the door of the party that doesn't want you. I'm done with it. Like, I could probably get my Twitter back now. Not my handle, not verified, but I could be on. I don't want to. It, 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 I don't want to be around people anymore that are like, Oh, Owen, cis white male. Your privilege has got to go. I'd be like, dude, I'm out of here, man. This is so fucking gay. All right, the right to free tweets. Thanks, Steve. The apes in the movie were like seriously advanced and were a, for, um, a force of overthrowing. It's a joke about the me overthrow Rama, in my opinion. Oh, I know. I know. It's insane. Like, if you know the story of Planet of the Apes, the humans were the... Um, were the captives. And it was like they weren't subhumans. The, it, it's about the fucking haircut, guys. All right. We ever start producing films? It would be great for us to have a place to submit our screenplays and for others to work on productions. Oh, yeah. For sure. You know, one day at a time, and I didn't sleep last night, and I have three shows uh, this weekend, and I'm with my fam, and, I, you know, uh, we're doing Unbearable News Network, and we're doing um, all kinds of shit. But I, I'm I have I'm having dreams about making movies and shit like that. I think movies might be the ticket because TV can be very consuming, and uh, I think if we just get a really good story and a way to shoot it, I know we could do it. Like my 60 minutes seven days documentary I did, I shot that on my cell phone, and people were like, "Man, I wish this was in like fucking festivals and shit." I'm like, they're like, "Who is your director of photography?" I'm like, Apple. Where's my Bailey's banana Irish cream? I don't know, bro. Is this therapeutic to you? It is for me. Well, just communicating is. And that's and that's why I have this this feeling, uh, uh, this obsession with education and this obsession with like getting things in order. Because I really think that I had the luckiest childhood when it comes to um, intelligence. And I, I truly don't, think it's that genetic I think I could have been fucking retarded like I feel that sometimes like sometimes I'm like man I could have just been fucking just a criminal I have like rages and I sometimes can't spell and I, I I'm like man if I didn't have my parents it just would would read to me and talk to me about concepts and and help me like expand allow me to be alone and allow me to pursue any hobby I had and allow me to fall in love with learning and this was, you know, a stay-at-home mom and a dad that was making 20 grand a year. It's not like it, the privilege isn't money or race. It's literally parenting. And that's why I'm throwing my life into being a good dad and stuff because I think that's godly. Like that's the most you can honor God in my opinion is to be a good family. Because that's life. That that that's how you that's how you keep the breath of the divine going. And it's in every family. It's it, 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 there's a spark that happens when, when families do things. And I, I've never felt it like this before, where you have that feeling when your wife really looks at you and smiles deeply, like, look at, you know, there's just, I, there's no words for it where you're like, this is what life is. And um, I'm just really trying to understand it as best as I can. And it's a weird time to be a comedian. It just is, you know, it's a minefield and it's, it can be really annoying. And so, I don't know. All right, I gotta I gotta read these because we gotta we're looking at houses and stuff too. She took the knee, sad. I thought her tweet was funny. Yeah, taking the knee was insane. Tired of people uh, hearing people calling for Bill Maher's head because of the Trump comments. Do you think that's mostly trolls or actual MAGA peeps? Uh both. Because I can see the argument. I've felt that before. I felt scalp for scalp. I think that's human nature. But it's it's more a craving for fairness, and I just think we need to be bigger. And just be like, I'm going to live what I want you to live. I'm not going to make, I'm not going to punish you with your own nonsense. I think that that's, the fact that it was a Twitter story or someone sent it to me and I, I, it looks like a Twitter story. The fact it's a Twitter story means it somehow benefits the left. So I don't know why they did that, but it's, it's just stupid. 
Yesterday, I had one of the most painful and hardest days of my life. Tell your bro thank you for me because of what he said that you posted. Oh, that's cool, Delicate Bear. He'll love that. I hope you're okay. Hey, Big Bear, here's some honey. Can't wait for an Australian tour. Sending love to your family, man. Can I be verified as Mellow Bear? Thanks. Yeah, welcome, Mellow Bear. It's an honor. Honor to have you, bud. Oh, and also, um, Portland and Bellevue are sold out. I might be able to add like 20 chairs to Portland though, because it is a big space. And the dudes that, that uh, own it are just so cool. They're like, yeah, man, let's just really rock it. But um, Richland still has a few. We've been doing well up there. So hugepianist.com, if you want to come to that show, that is tomorrow. So we'll stop selling tickets probably in four or five hours, because then we have to send out the emails and make sure our list is tight. And email me, why didn't they laugh at gmail.com if you if you uh, want to work, if you want a couple hours and uh, maybe do a uh, door or, you know, help me sell shit. <clears throat> I like to hook up the bears. Psych for Richland Bellevue shows, bringing my dad. Hell yeah. Filming your Bellevue, Bellevue show. Can't wait. That's awesome. I, I love it. And audio is very, very important. I'm uh, If anyone uh, does audio, I got audio for Portland, but uh, Richland and Bellevue. Like, my audio always ends up sucking, even when I buy all this crazy shit. So if anyone wants to get involved, filming your Bellevue show. All right. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. I agree and have been yelling at my local radio saying the same stuff about Roseanne. I was feeling crazy. Dude, I was yelling at Shapiro in, 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 in my car. I couldn't believe that. It was, like, egregious and filthy and disgusting. It's like, what? Have you? And then it dawned on me. You know, I love it. I love Shapiro. But it's like he's he's never worked on a construction or trees or anything. Like he, I don't think he's been around a lot of like dude dudes. They're like, shut your fucking cunt mouth. Your mom wants dick in her mouth. You know your mom wants dick in her mouth. And by the way, you know your wife is thirsty. She's thirsty. You know, dudes just talk shit. Calling someone a monkey, it's just nothing. It's like calling someone a bastard and being like that's racist because we all know blacks leave their kids. It's like shut the fuck up. Still need donations to buy insulin tomorrow. I, you're not vetted, bud. I, I'm sorry. Hey, Owen, did you read my PayPal for Monday? So, sorry, man. I haven't. I, I will do a day where I go through all that. And thank you for that. anything that you give because uh, money's been a little tight because I have been, uh, been able to pay people some, some stuff. And uh, so, yeah, that's very helpful. Hey, uh, ben Shapiro is a beholden gatekeeper. Take a sec. I do not know what that means, my friend. <clears throat> Raphael, thank you, buddy. Uh, Pinder, Owen had another 10 bear hangout last night live on YouTube and it was a huge success. Wasn't Dom's fault this time. Got drunk all by ourselves. That sounds heavenly. Kalurgi plan is happening. Only whites reject identity politics, all part of the JQ. Well, listen, man, uh, I, I don't even go down those roads to be honest. It's not fear or cowardice. It just seems gay to me because I have no interest in identity politics. And I, I think that I get why people would truly I get the alt-right. I get that shit. I understand that feeling of like, it's the same with wanting Bill Maher to, to resign because your person got fired. But it's like, I don't want to be proud of nothing. I, I, I'm proud and ashamed and great and happy. Like, there's so much complicated shit that just comes with who you are as an individual. And if, and if it's about your race, you're kind of gay. It just is. And it, and it, you know, and you can be like super patriotic and wanting fucking tight borders and all that shit. I'm, I'm fine with all that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying like the whole, look at these people. These are white people. Look at these fucking people. There's no homogeny in race. I would fucking rather blow my brains out than sit at that table and listen to them try and write for Arrow. That looks, to me, that looks like hell. That's hell. Hi, we're the writers for Arrow. We don't need you here, man. They're white. So what the fuck is this racial shit? I get that there's like, you know, in-group preferencing and people get tribal. I'm not denying any of that, but it's just gay. All right, do you think she would have been fired if she didn't apologize? I think I read that she apologized immediately, but could be wrong. Um, It definitely didn't help her. Apolog apologizing will make it more likely that you'll be fired. And the Navy... uh. Machinist mates are called monkeys. Oh, totally. It's it's laughable that people don't get that. When I'm in public, I rarely witness the sexism, racism, violence that the media government is so determined to create. What do they gain by doing this? That was from Brooke. Uh, division. 
Division. Division, division. And a lot of it's just motivated by shitty, spiteful fucking people. Uh, you know, the government. The government wants more power. I was talking to someone from Venezuela uh, on the plane today. I was just, we were going back and forth in Instagram DMs. They're in hell. And they they took, they did gun control. They, uh, they, they prepped everything with like socialist propaganda and TV and film. It's horrifying. They're trying to do it to us. But uh, I just think American spirit is very resilient. And I think that we have, dude, we have fucking 1,300 people watching right now. Watching just a dude talk about like good ethics and stuff and family making. It's, we're fine. We're not fine. We're, we're against a serious wall, but we'll be okay. I may, I may not know what it's like to be black, but I know what it's like to be human. Right. And I also know what it's like to have my bike stolen. I don't know what it's like to be married, so I can't judge a man who murders his wife. That's hilarious, Pale Bear. Thank you, Cue Ball. I think the Shapiro types are the politically correct non-PC. They secretly want to be loved by the New York Times. Love the guy, but never surprises me with his lukewarmness. I completely agree, Leo. I completely agree. And uh, I get it. I, you know, I get that instinct. Who doesn't want to be just loved by big, um, glamorous places? And it's probably good for his brand. It's probably long-term a good move, you know, to, to be the more Dennis Prager type. Uh, and by the way, I'm working with those guys, too. That, that shit's coming along well. I have two videos with them coming out in July and then uh, a weekly show that we're still trying to figure out what the best move is because I want to come out firing. But like there's there's a good there's a good I, there's a good angle to that where you can be Dennis Prager and sit there with Don Lemon and be polite and Don Lemon is even like I mean of course I respect uh your sources and all that. And then you have me this fucking maniac. I get why some people do that. I just think that that specific thing was so st- it's so, it's such projection. In Shapiro's case, I think it's just the lack of knowledge of how fucking working class dudes talk. Uh, Cause I don't think Shapiro's a racist uh, at all. I think very few people are racist. I think it's fucking dumb. But I think that him saying that kind of set us back a little bit because what, what she said isn't fucking racist. And also, uh, comedians don't shouldn't be allies to to politicians. It's just like, just be crazy. Roseanne Barr is crazy. Shapiro had my blood boiling. Nobody bets a thousand, but he missed this one by a mile. Thanks for addressing it. Bring those bitch hips to Indianapolis soon. I will. I'll prance my bitch hips. Yeah, and it's all good. I mean, Shapiro does bat high, <clears throat> but that one I was like, okay, so the fucking five rants I just did on Instagram, you think I'm now a racist? You're, you're embarrassed by me, Shapiro? Remember last time we took a picture and you commented how fucking huge I was? God Sad has a great new video. Love it. I didn't know VG was black. Roseanne's first response to being called racist. Muslim is not a race. Roseanne didn't know and biggest mistake. Sorry. Exactly. When I read that, there was nothing racist about it. It was like, um, I got to get through these though. Amy's going to kill me. Oh man, I, I, I didn't know VG. All right. Genetic component is mostly size of head, I think. Everything after that is environment. Yeah, I, I just don't know. I think I'm not going to play scientist when I don't know. I just think that like a lot of people are intentionally not given the tools. You know? But see, if, if it's head size, why aren't midgets all stupid? They do have big heads. But uh, like a midget, like why? they definitely have a smaller head than a normal size person. And like, I don't think that there's a... I don't know. Hello, uh, I'm part German, part Irish, and probably part Jewish. Superpowers, drink people under the table and have a huge noggin. Hilarious. That, By the way, me too. That's a good mix. And I'm Scandinavian too, but uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Who cares? GWB got to learn from his mistakes of his father and those around him. Yeah. And he got, he just got the keys, man. He, he learned how to handle himself in situations. And, uh, it's so valuable. Like John Taylor Gatto, I'm obsessed with the guy. He talks about that, how you can literally change a kid's life if you teach him how to speak publicly. That's the, one of the best fucking things you can have. All right. Big Bear, you're the best. Where's the bruise, bro? Just revisit your uh, Peterson chat. Amazing. Can you play any of the Beatles? Maxwell Silver Hammer. I don't have my piano. I'm at my wife's uh, parents' house, but Portland Venue. I have extra ticket bears. Uh, I will be sending the email tomorrow. I always keep it last minute because I don't want uh, anybody giving anyone shit for no reason. But I can't wait to hang with you guys. How many years can blacks claim to be victims of racism when called an ape? 100 years? 200 years? 
there's no logic. That that's something people seriously got to understand. It's it. There's no logic, guys. The, the Holocaust was in 1940s. They didn't even let the Jews work. They just incinerated them, and then they fucking dusted off and took over Wall Street. And no one's like, well, in the ashes of the Holocaust, the Holocaust is so much worse than slavery, in my opinion. At least they let slaves work. Back then, everybody was some sort of fucking slave. That's what Slav means. The Irish were slaves. Germans used to be slaves. Russia didn't get rid of uh, and then, uh, serfdom, which means that you, when you bought an acre of land, you got like two dudes uh, until the 20th century. So it, we all know this. It's just fucking gay. Honestly, honesty is the answer to education. Always answer the children's questions honestly. If you don't know the answer, look it up and talk. Yes, because that allows them to like have a place to go from. If you if you aren't honest, they never can really get a an algorithm or a process. There are many who find a good alibi far more attractive than an achievement. Far for an achievement does not settle anything permanently. Google this. I, I can't right now, but. That sounds very interesting. You should look into Jawbreaker's graphic novels from a group of conservative creators who have raised over 300000 while battling the SJW comic industry. That sounds awesome. I know we could raise... I think the money that I make on my book, I'm going to put into a movie. Because my book's almost done. I'm almost ready to fucking rock party. NPR coverage of the Roseanne Storm is appalling. Far left. They're losing me. Owen, I have so much respect and admiration for you and your family. Sending love from New Zealand. Can I please be Moss Bear? Welcome, Moss Bear. Oh, NPR lost me years ago. National Public Radio? It might as well be called Mao Zay fucking Phonathon. Are you planning? Are you still getting money from Patreon? Yes. They backed off completely. So, uh, and it's a good, it's a good system. But we we have some major developments of our app that I, you guys should definitely check out. It's uh, Unbearable's app.com great chat going on in there all the time and uh there's going to be some major improvements soon but uh patreon's just convenient sometimes you can just upload when you're just spiraling hey Owen, why don't you create a discord so your fans can interact with you and each other love the show good luck on your comedy shows i never knew i never understood it but i can look into that uh i was going to write a joke about organ transplants but i didn't have the heart for it hilarious pun <laughs> and your name's punchline bear Big Bear, Portland location being emailed out when? Tomorrow morning. <coughs> All right, I got to go. I love you guys. Um, hit the like button. Share it. Send it to people that say that she's racist. Let people listen to this because some people aren't lost. They're, ze they're zebra people. And um, if you want to support the show, hugepianist.com slash subscribe because that's been a bit of a fickle situation because uh, PayPal... We'll just drop payments and just be weird. And a, a, lot of, a lot of them go through, but a lot of them don't. So uh, the more the merrier. And I, I try to make them the, like benefits to it. Like I'll, I'll send out stuff I'm selling earlier, tickets or um, I don't know. But it's, it's pretty much just if you want to keep this party going. The, the, the most expensive thing in the world is free. So if you don't have cash, that's totally cool too. Just fucking hit the like button. Don't be a pussy. And, uh, and share it, because there's a million currencies in the world, and money's just one of many, 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 many. Another is um, is sharing, because we got to spread this shit. I'm so fucking sick of being called racist. It's so dumb. Like, that Starbucks thing was so dumb. And it's like you're in a bad movie, where it just, you, you keep thinking, like, somebody once described to me, what it looked like when uh, killing somebody in war that uh, they can't believe that it's happening to them when it's like with a knife. It's like they, they can't, they can't believe it's happening. Like it's really, it's a, there's like a stun to it. I feel that way about society a little bit where it's like, is no one going to care that, that, that like Caitlyn Jenner got one of the year, you know, like all this stuff where it's like, what? Like David Hogg is trying to take our guns? Like, do we not have granddads that like, and people are just, yeah, I mean, a Macintosh computer is now racist because apples are red and red are Indians and Indians are sacred. It's, that's not an exaggeration, dudes. Like last day, I'm just re-showing you the AIDS thing. This is real. They legalize giving people AIDS and then blame 
the spreading of STDs on racism. Like how fucking retarded can people get? And they just don't stop. Like every time you think it's going to be, that's why Unbe uh, Unbearable News Network, check it out. We're making videos now. I still have to uh, do my video though. I've been slacking a little, but it's almost hard to write satire because you write satire and within like a month, it's real. All right, Owen takes as long to get off a stream as it takes me to go to sleep. That is very true to Lev. Well, just to say, go fuck you. Uh, hey, hey, Dulev, I'm out. F fuck you.